Welcome to the Vacation Races and Friends podcast. A podcast about events, travel, and the people who love both. Find more episodes at vacationraces.com. Hey there, this is Colleen. I am the race announcer for Vacation Races. I'm with Dane Craig, the race director of the Great Smoky Mountain Half Marathon and 5K Live Event 2020. Dane, we're going to talk race guide today. Let's do it. It's going to be good stuff. Um, excited to be back in Tennessee and that we were able to make this whole race happen. Kind of tell us how this is, um, you know, 2020 has been different. It's been weird, but here we are coming to Tennessee. What what about Tennessee is making this and being able to happen? Um, so Tennessee is, I mean, you thought we were the Wild West out here. Tennessee is like anything goes, apparently. Apparently it's good to go in Tennessee. So we've been able to put on a few events um, since June that have been very successful and and uh, and we've had to make a varying degree of modifications just depending obviously on the state and the county and things like that. Um, you know, most recently we had a race Rocky Mountain Half Marathon out in Estes Park, Colorado, and and the way that worked was we we modified our operation plan. Uh, to show how we were going to facilitate social distancing and, you know, how we were going to handle so many people without forcing them all into a crowded space, basically. Um, and so we were able to submit that to the health department and get that approved. Uh, and then, and then we put on the race and everything went really smooth and runners cooperated. Um, they were tremendous and, and everything went great. And in Tennessee, we, we don't have that. There's not like clear, um, guidelines for congregating or outdoor activities or things like that. So, which makes the permitting of the event very, very easy. Right. There's uh, no changes from a normal year. Sure. But, but then uh, what we felt is that the, the burden has kind of been put on us to then say, okay, we're not doing these things just because these guidelines require us to like, you know, we got to take a hard look at some of our operations and say, what do we think? is really in the runner's best interest and safe and a responsible way to do this race. And so, so we've got a lot of, uh, you know, modifications and precautions that we have in place for the event, but they're all self-imposed. So we're grateful to Tennessee for having us. Uh, and also grateful we've had some of these previous experiences putting on races that have shown us what some best practices are and how we can do this without, you know, putting anybody at, at risk unnecessarily obviously there's always risks you know covid sure sure set aside there's always risk when participating in large group events but yeah ways that we can mitigate those risks risks and put on a awesome event for our runners so before we do the deep dive kind of into how the start and the course is going to look and things like that what are some of those differences that you just talked about that are going to be implemented that we're going to see out there in the great smoky mountain race at tennessee in tennessee so any any uh, aspect of a race that involves lots of congregating, we're trying to avoid or minimize, right? And so that would obviously be an expo, start line and finish line, and then aid stations on course. Those are kind of the four main areas where you're going to have uh, congregation, and that's what we're trying to avoid. So no expo. We're going to do drive-through bid pickup. Um you're going to see a lot of the people wearing masks, which you normally wouldn't see at a race. And then uh, we're going to stagger our the start of the race. We're going to do, uh, stagger the bus schedule, the shuttle schedule, and then uh, have a rolling start. So it's just going to be a trickle of people spread out over about an hour and a half, which will allow us or will help us to avoid congregating at the start line make congestion on course a lot less people are a lot more thinned out and then uh the same thing at the finish line you know people kind of come in a little bit more of a trickle and then are able to leave before we have a buildup of people and you know a traffic jam so so those are the main things that we're going to see is you know no expo and uh staggered rolling start great and then on the 5k we do have some course changes that we'll get into in just a little bit too that's going to help reduce congestion on that 5k course as well yeah yeah, so good things happening. It's just exciting to be able to be talking about a live event. So many people ready to run a live event, and this one's going to be safe, and it's going to be awesome. I absolutely love this course. I tell people all the time this is actually one of my 
favorite vacation races courses here in Tennessee, because I think I live in the desert of Southern Utah. So it's so different. It's like the antithesis of what I'm used to. You've got these tree lined roads that are just the canopy of trees in the Great Smoky Mountains is just absolutely gorgeous. And you've got a perfect course. That's it looks on paper. It looks like it's all uphill and it's going to be really tough, but it's just this gentle rolling yeah. course. And it really is one of the perfect courses. Courses. I love it. It is. It's I, so my wife ran it last year for the first time and she loved it. Yeah. And she's run and she's run all of them. And she was, she was just raving about it. I think for similar reasons, you know, it's just the, the scenery and everything is just so different than what we're used to out here. You know, there's water where you can see, you know, more than like a foot in the right. water. Like right. You clear. get like it's clear stream. It, it really is gorgeous. And so let's get into all of the nitty gritty that's going to go on with the event. As far as Friday, you talked about the drive through drive through expo, drive through bib pickup. So we don't actually have an expo with vendors, but you're going to be able to just drive in kind of like the bank and pick up everything you need. Right. Yep, that's exa- that's exactly right. So uh, we're gonna have bid pickup at the Tally Ho Inn, um, which is where kind of most things related to the race are happening. Um, and so if you look at page two of the race guide, we've got a map on there. There's a massive field behind the Tally Ho Inn, which is where our finish line is. Not in the field, but at the Tally Ho Inn. And and so in that in that big field behind the inn uh, is where we park everybody for Saturday morning for the race, and also Friday evening for the 5K. So at the far end of the field, we're going to have our bibs, our bib tent set up. So we'll be handing out bibs, hydro pouches, and race shirts. And if you're signed up for our Black Bear Double, we'll be handing out Black Bear Double swag as well. So you're just going to drive um, through. No need to get out of your vehicle. Staff's going right. to help you while you're in your vehicle. So, right, yeah, you just you'll just drive up. We'll walk up to your car and get your name, check your you know your uh, photo ID grab all that stuff for you and hand it to you into the car. We will, we will also be uh, checking temperatures. If okay. anybody's running fevers, we're going to ask them not to participate in the event. And um, that's all going to start at 10 a.m. on Friday. So um, we can't do it earlier than 10 a.m. So plan to be there right at 10 o'clock. That's when it, it's going to start. And it's going to go till what time? About 5 o'clock? 5 p.m. Yep. So bid pickup will be from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then uh, our 5K is going to start at 6 p.m. So at 5 p.m., we will still be allowing bid pickup for the 5K. But if you're running the half only um, and you don't get your bid by 5 p.m., then just plan on picking it up at the start line race morning. It's not a big deal. We do it all the time. So we like everybody to come get it on Friday. You obviously would rather have your bib the day before, you know, one less thing to worry about race morning. But if you're not there by 5 for the half marathon and you need to pick up your bib, then just come see us at the start line Saturday morning and we'll get you your bib. So Dane, we're not having an expo, but we will have race merchandise for sale, right? Yes, that's right. So Megan will be there with, with all of our great smoky mountains and, uh, and other national park and, and vacation races paraphernalia. So we've got, we've got face masks, we've got bananas, hats, yeah, lots of shirts, beach hoodies, sweatshirts, gooder, sunglasses. Um, I saw a new buffs. design for a T-shirt this year. We've got a new design that we're going to roll out this year. For the Smokies? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got a new design. So we'll have previous year's designs. Then we've got a new design for uh, merchandise this year as well. So Megan will be there. She'll be there Friday from about uh, 4 until 8 at the finish line. So right as runners leave the runner recovery area at the finish line, she'll be there and then she'll be there again Saturday morning. So, um, so So you have, she'll also be sending, selling hydration. So if you have any last minute needs, like if you've got a water bottle or things like that, she'll have that kind of stuff. So great. So you won't miss out on your merchandise. That was a big thing in Rocky Mountain where people are like, can we still get race merchandise? Yes, we will have it for you. So you can take home some fun swag with you because we have such great shirts. I love it. And I love seeing a new design for this year. So yeah, so 10 to 5 Friday, we'll have that drive through 
bib pickup experience. You'll have parking there. And then we're looking forward to the 5K. So parking is available right by the Tally Ho. Everything will be signed. We've got our Blue Vacation Races signs out there. It'll be very clear where you're going to go to park. And then once they show up there, get parked for the 5K, Dane, what's the next procedure for them? Yeah, so again, on that same map, you can see, so on page two, um, behind the tally ho, there's that big field where we're parking everybody. And then just across the way, uh, there's another big field. Tennessee is great. There's big fields. <laughs> lots of <everywhere>. grass, <laughs> lots of grassy areas. <laughs> yeah. So there's so there's a large grassy area behind, it's called the Carriage House, which is a restaurant there. Um, and so we're going to kind of have 5K runners as they arrive and they're getting ready to run, go over and stage over there. Now, if if you look on page three, we've got, um, oh, no, sorry. Page three is for the half marathon. For the half but. marathon. You're, yeah, if we're looking for the 5K information is all on page number nine. So if you've got That's your race right. guide, check out page number nine. So on page, page nine, you can see that we have start times kind of uh, based off of your wave which waves are typically assigned based off of your estimated finish time, which runners provide for us at registration. But if they didn't provide it, we kind of randomly assigned it. So don't be surprised if you're going to run like a 15 minute 5k and you're put in the red group, you know, and you're like, that's not, well, that brings that's up not appropriate a for good, my time. A good question. Is it okay to move if you've been put in a wave and you're like, oh, I got, you know, injured. I don't think I'm going to run as fast or vice versa. I think I can run faster than what I put down. Is it okay to shift those? Yeah, we, we don't police the waves. Um, we use the waves as a as a way to build out our schedule and to let people know when to be where and so that there's not unnecessary waiting and that our logistics run smooth. Um, but obviously, there's situations where somebody, you know, two people traveling together run crazy different times, you know, opposite ends of the spectrum, and and they want to run together and or start at the same time, um, or you know, somebody's running with their child and they want to be with them and start with them. Or like you said, they're like, no, I, I know I assigned this wave, but I'm going to run a lot faster than that. Um, so in those instances, again, because we don't police the waves, it is okay to switch waves. You don't need to tell us. You don't need to let us know. We don't. Uh, I don't want to say we don't care, but we don't care. <laughs> well, just go, go with we your appropriate that, finish time. That's yes. that's basically we, the gist. We do, we do care. We, unless you have a good reason, please run in your assigned wave. Right. Um, but if you, if you need to change for reasons then that's okay. We understand that that's going to happen and we're prepared for that. So so in the past, the 5K course has been um, the start and finish. We're kind of in an out and back fashion. We've got some changes to the 5K course this year that's going to actually affect where we start. We're going to be starting in a little bit different space. So how's that going to work? Yeah, so we do have a new 5K course. In past years, we've started and ended at the Tally Ho and it was kind of a lollipop route. Um, you went down on the green belt there through town and then ran a lollipop loop like through the field, which I really liked. We got a lot of negative feedback on it, understandably. Um, but I really enjoyed that little section. But the, aside from that, uh, the dislike of running through the field, there was also a lot of congestion. The 5k is very popular. We get a lot of runners. And so having an out and back section of the course, you had a lot of congestion, which, which isn't great under normal conditions, especially right now when we're trying to minimize people crossing paths and, and contact, it was, it was a, it was a non-starter. So, so we actually worked with the town and with, and with the police and we've got a great course that just starts right across the street from the tally hill. Um, and then it's going to run on a, a pathway that's on the opposite side. And then you're going to run in the same direction, but on the opposite side of the road, we're going to run down through into town and then cut back a little bit um, kind of back behind some, some businesses and houses in into some trees and along the river and then come back and we'll have an aid station at mile or about mile two, which is the same spot that our aid station will be at mile 12 for the half marathon on Saturday. And right there, there's a tunnel that goes under the road. So runner, so we'll have to cross everybody before they start. But once runners are on course, there won't be any road crossings or anything like that they'll have to worry about. So they run through that tunnel and then they just come back on that um, same green belt that they were on earlier, right up to the 
um, finish line. That's what I'm liking about this new course is there's a little more shade on this new course than there was on the other course. So you'll get yes. some of the sun on the way on the return to the finish line. But we used to be out in the sun the whole time. You're going to get some a little bit more shade on this on this yeah, new course. And the, so. and the 5K is hot. It the is half hot. Mar- the half marathon can be hot as well, especially those last few miles. It's, you're you're kind of out of the tree canopy and you're exposed and it can be hot. Um, but no matter what we do, the 5k yeah. is hot. It's hot and humid. So if you're running the 5k, be prepared for hot weather. Yeah, definitely be prepared for that. And so as we, as we talk about your start times, you're going to come to the back of the carriage house and that's where you're going to be. And if you look on page nine, you've got all these waves. And so when you get your bib, you'll be assigned to a color of a wave. And so we'll have three different start times, if you will, six o'clock, six thirty, and seven o'clock. And your color for your wave will be assigned to one of those start times. And if you look at the little chart, there's a meeting time that you have. Then there's a time that we're going to be taking staff will take you and you'll cross the highway and you'll get ready for the actual start. And then the race start six, six thirty, and seven. So it will be kind of a rolling type of thing. Listen for announcements. We'll be making those throughout. It will be very clear once you get there. We just ask you to social distance, make sure you can hear us, and uh, we'll take care of you once you get where you need to be. But that's a great chart on page nine to really yeah. reference for the start. Basically, because we have to, that's a, the main road that goes through town, and it can be a busy road, and it's the it goes into the park, and so a lot of people travel on that road. And so because we have to cross runners we don't want to, and we're trying to do two things. We need to keep everybody spaced out and kind of allow for the rolling start, but then we also need to cross the road. So instead of having a trickle across the road and shutting down traffic for an hour or putting runners at risk, we're going to temporarily close the road for a few minutes, three times during the course of the 5k to get runners from one side over to the other side to where they can start the so race. So we'll be taking small groups together yeah. across that road. So Right. So hence hence the gathering at one time, crossing the road at another time, and then starting the race at a, at another time. So just identify your wave color and then just go off that chart and we'll take care of you. Yeah, we'll definitely take care of you. Make lots of announcements. You'll know where you're going in those times when you do, there's a little more congregation when you're, we're getting you ready to cross the road. That's the times that we encourage you to use a mask and any kind of face covering for that and to try to keep as much social distance as possible. So just kind of use your common sense in those areas and we'll get you across the road and you'll be on this new 5K course and back at the finish line, which the 5K finish line is the same as the half marathon finish line, right? front of the tally ho and it'll be great we have one aid station that will be on the 5k course and you'll always at all of our aid stations you'll have water gnarly hydrate which is an electrolyte drink which comes in real handy in the humidity there in tennessee and so that will be offered at about that mile two of the 5k so aid station is going to be any different dane the uh the only change of the aid station is going to be um that we're going to have these foot pedals so that you can, so that water dispensing will be hands-free so that not everybody has to put their hands close to the same place where water's coming out and they're filling their cups or not their cups, but their hydration. So vacation races is not only cup free, we're now hands-free at our aid stations. That's right. I love it. So do make sure that you have your hydro pouch. And if you don't have a hydro pouch that you got at your bib pickup, then you're going to make sure to just carry your own water bottle or some sort of a hydration pack where you can have that. And then we'll have our little hands-free, cup-free aid station out there for you to use one of those located on the 5K course. Cool. Awesome. Well, any other thoughts on the 5K? As far as awards go, we are doing age group awards and overall awards, but not having an actual awards ceremony. Correct. Yeah. For both the 5K and the half, we are doing age group awards and overall and master's awards. But um, because of the staggered start, we won't have results until much later. And so we're going to, and because we want to avoid congregating, we're going to forego an award ceremony, but we will mail out uh if you if you receive a placement award 
then we'll send that out after the race. Yeah, so you will get those. So you can still be competitive. Everything is based on chip time. So say you're not in the first group to cross the road for the 5K. That's okay. Everything's on chip time. So don't worry about that. You will be able to see your results. Those are always going to be posted at runsignup.com about 20 minutes after the finish. So just you can look for those as well. So we'll have them just no official awards ceremony. So All right, let's swing into the half marathon and talk about Saturday morning. We have some different logistics for the half marathon because it is a point to point course. So there's some shuttle busing that's involved for the half marathon. And all of that is laid out for you in the aid in the in the race guide. And if you look at page number three, you can see all the details for the staggered start for that. But before we get into the staggered start, Dane, Let's talk about parking Saturday morning and how the shuttles are going to work to get everybody up to that start line. Yeah, so parking is the same place as the parking for the 5K. It's going to be in the grass field behind the Tally Ho Inn. And uh, because the race, like you said, it is a point to point. We do shuttle everybody to the start line. So you'll park at your assigned parking time. So again, if you look at page three, much like the 5K, if, if you have an assigned you'll have an assigned wave and based off of that assigned wave, we have scheduled times that you should be parked by when you should be loading the shuttle. And then hopefully when you're arriving at the start line and about when you'll be starting the race. Um, and so shuttles will be just running back and forth constantly for about an hour and a half until we get all of our runners from the finish to the start. So to avoid unnecessary waiting, just kind of pay attention to uh, your scheduled time on that page three chart and, and don't be late. Yeah, you don't need to be super early. If you follow this chart, it, you're not going to be sitting in your car for a long period of time or anything like that. And also, if you are sitting in your car, we're going to be broadcasting announcements over an FM transmitter on FM 95.1. So you can tune into that and you'll be able to hear announcements without even getting out of your car. So that will be really convenient as well when you get in there to park and know when it's your time to come over to the shuttles. Now on the shuttles, Dane, are there's there's a mask requirement on that, right? Correct. Yeah, there masks will be required. Um, everyone should have their own because if you're going to be around anyone else, we're asking you to wear a mask. In the event that someone doesn't have a mask, we will have disposable masks on hand that we can distribute to runners as they as they board the shuttles. But anybody riding the shuttle should have uh, should be wearing a mask. Okay, and those shuttles will be leaving from the Tally Ho. It's about a 15-minute ride up the street until we get up to the high school where the official start line is. And so you'll be on that that shuttle for about 15 minutes. It's actually quite an easy drive. Um, and we'll get up there and get you dropped off. We'll have porta potties available. We'll have gear check available. We'll also have some hot chocolate and hot water to make coffee with. And everything you need to get ready for your start up there. But the start is going to be a little bit different as far as a rolling start, Dane. So talk us through, once we get off the shuttle up at the high school, how is that going to work? When do I know that I'm going to start and how's that going to go? Yeah. Um, Well, real quick before that. So in addition to the parking and the shuttles, we do have runner drop-off. Oh, good point. Yes. at At the start line at the high school. Um, so if you'd like to be dropped off, that's fine. In fact, we, we would encourage it this time because that's less people that we have to fit on shuttles. We will be operating shuttles only at half capacity again, to allow people to space out. So, um, if you have the means or if you would prefer it, then there there's runner drop off there at the start line, but there is no parking at the start line. So it, it, yeah. it is a drop off scenario. So if you have your own vehicle, but you don't have someone to drive that vehicle back to the finish line, um, you're going to need to take the shuttle. But, um, and, and it's like a hard close on the gates of the high school. Like you're not getting your car out. <laughs> yeah. The high school comes behind us and they close it. They've ha- they've used the high school for other activities before. And so they've closed off parking. And so we've had people get stuck inside cause they lock up the gate, but, um, it, yeah, it's not, it's definitely not a drop off as in park your car and get out and wait with your runner until they start the race kind of drop off. It's a literal, like a drive through. Even, yeah. I don't even want you to hit the brakes. I want you to kick, <laughs> just like, kick, kick your runner out, right out. <laughs> let the runner tuck and roll and you just keep on. Dri- no, it, it's obviously they can get out. You can stop the car for them. But, um, but once they're out, then we need you to, we need you to go out because there's not space for you to park. The shuttles are coming through and we can't have you parked there. And inevitably 
because we do this every year. <laughs> somebody is going to show up. Yes, they are. Late and be like, ah, I didn't, you know, I didn't realize I had to take the shuttle. And so, and they park their car and I'm like, you know, that it's not going to get out of here. <laughs> I know it's not going to be out of there. And so one of us has to drive their car back to the finish line, which I'm never totally comfortable with. <laughs> it's, it's never comfortable getting into a complete stranger's vehicle and driving away in it. Yeah. And I, there's liability issues, and I'm, <laughs> but I'm like, we got to, you know, we want them to start the race and we got to help them out. But, um, and they're never driving that fun of a car. Like I've never, no, it's not, it's I've not never once had somebody it's not like a up. Corvette up there, you know, it's somebody's Ford yeah. Tempo from like 1998 <laughs> that we have to drive back down the door barely shuts. You have to kick it a few <laughs> times. So, the the be all to end all. Please take the shuttle from the Tally Ho if you need to. If you can have, if you can be dropped off, we'd love to have you dropped off at the high school. But it's kind of a drop and go situation. Absolutely, positively, no parking at the high school at where the start line is. Yeah. So so coming back to our unless chart. you have a Bugatti, you know <laughs> Veyron that Dane would like to drive back to the finish line, then it's totally fine. Leave the keys. <laughs> yeah. So coming back to our chart on page three, um, again, your, your park time, shuttle time, arrive time, and start time are all scheduled based off of your wave. Um, but what's going to happen at the start line once you get to the high school is we're going to kind of, we got a big parking lot to spread everybody out in. And so Colleen's going to be there. She'll be announcing, trying to keep order and separation, everything like that. The start line isn't right from the high school, though. It's just out um, on Tukwichi Pike. Down, just around like, the corner. Like about a, yeah. yeah, about 50 yards, 100 yards. Not too far. And so so we're going to take groups at a time. And the start, the race will officially start at 7 a.m. But once that race starts, it's just going to be a rolling start. There won't be, I mean, we have race starts scheduled at 7, 7.20, 7.50, right? But it's not going to be like a countdown each time. Once we start that race, it's just going to be a rolling start. That start line is going to be open. And so as runners arrive... Uh, we want to keep a trickle. We don't want a whole group of people going down there at once, you know, so we'll just kind of, as everyone spaces out. It's kind of like we're opening a faucet and let people just kind of go down. You basically, yeah. you don't want to leave the high school without having everything. Your gear bag is all tucked away and you've given it to us and then we're going to take care of it. You're ready to go. You're ready to race because the start line, you're just going to hit the mat and you will be officially started. So, yeah. And once you hit those mats, once you hit those mats, you're, um, your chip time will start, but you should kind of have the mindset of once you leave the parking lot, then you're kind of on course. Yeah. 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 So, so watching out because it is not going to be a closed road there. You do need to stay onto the right hand side of the road and get down over to the mat. And, and, you know, we say that as far as traffic on this, this course, that's one thing about this course is it's very low traffic. You, you get out there on Tuckalichi, but then you go on old Walland highway. That is very low traffic and it, it really is beautiful. It's not a spectator friendly course. We ask that we don't put extra vehicles on that course. So if you do have some spectators, we ask that um, they don't drive on the actual course because that just puts our runners in danger. Yeah. And it's not a main road, but it is a traffic road and the road yes. is not closed. So this is an open course. Yes. Um, and so runners do need to be cautious and stay to the right, you know, not run four abreast and take up the whole road. Like be courteous of the community that's allowing us to hold this race and, and also for your own safety, you know, just stay to the right and, and watch for vehicle traffic. Um, a real quick comment on the, the rolling start is we, we've done this a few times with this kind of a start and obviously we give up, you know, the, the adrenaline and the pump pomp and circumstance of like being packed in there with thousands of other runners and starting our race, which is a little bit of a bummer, but the rolling start, also really is like a real stress-free low yeah. stakes start. I mean, yep. like if you're in the blue wave and it's 7 a.m. and you're still in the porta potty, like <laughs> it's fine. It's, it's cool. It's totally like, fine. It. Yeah. There's no don't, rush. Don't don't rush anything. You finish taking care of your pre-race business. Or, you know, or if you need to check your gear bag or if you need to still finish that cup of coffee or whatever it is. Yep. Um, obviously we want everybody to cross the start line and get on the course, but it's uh, but it's kind of as you're ready which yeah. is great. And it's a really cool environment. So you don't have to, don't feel rushed once you get there, but do, you know, get your things done and move along. And we want to get you out on that beautiful course. So 
And then 13.1 miles, we've got six aid stations out on the course that are going to all have water in blue jugs. Gnarly Hydrate will be in the red jugs. That's our electrolyte drink. And we'll also have Honey Singer gels at every single aid station. The aid stations start at mile three, about-ish, mile three. And then every two miles thereafter, you will hit an aid station. And all aid stations also have porta-potties at them. So that's always a question I get is, are there porta-potties? All of the aid stations will have porta potties. We'll have volunteers there. We talked about the aid stations and how they will be hands free as well as cup free. So you'll have a foot pedal action in order to disperse your fluids that you need, but you do need to have either your hydro pouch or your own personal hydration system when you're using the aid stations. So. Yeah, it's all good stuff. So spectators, we do ask that you guys stay off of the. Um, the race course, because it is very difficult for us. There's some other places you can spectate along the main highway that has parking areas that are right next to the trail that the runners will be on. So make sure to look at the map on that to to find some of those places. But being on the, the course is, is just something we discourage because it just makes more traffic and we want as little traffic as possible for our runners on that course. So yeah, 13.1 miles. Anything else about the course, Dane? It's really, ha- it hasn't changed if you've run with us before. Um, yeah. No, it's a great course. It's it's beautiful. Uh, like you said, the, the first several miles have a real nice uh, tree canopy that provides a lot of shade, which is really nice. The last several miles, once you get to town, do not. And yes. and you'll feel it. Like it, if, it gets more Depending exposed. on the weather, if the yeah. sun's out, yeah, it's... It can be hot and you're exposed for those last few miles. So just mentally kind of prepare for that and, and know that that's coming. Uh, not a lot of elevation gain. It rolls a little bit, but I don't, you don't really feel a lot of the elevation gain. There is a section or two um, where the pitch of the road is, it's slanted. It's like, it's like running on a NASCAR track. Like cambered. Not that, not, it, it's cambered. Yeah. Yes. So, so it's yeah. kind of like cambered or crowned is what we call it. So. Um, it's a little off, so it tends to, you want to kind of run closer to the center, but you need to stay over to that side. Yeah. So just, so just watch out for that. Yeah. And there's nothing particularly steep on this course. There is one hill that you will come upon, um, a little early in the race, probably the steepest. And I use that in like quotes, air quotes, the steepest parts of the race are going to come in the first, you know, first five miles. You're going to notice a couple of little rollers that have a little kick to them, but we're talking about 20, 30 steps. And then you're up and over that top. So they, they kind of have a little tiny rise to them and then they'll go back down. And then the rest of the course is basically just rolling. You probably won't even notice as it rolls in that upward direction. Cause of course you're going to Towards Great Smoky Mountain National Park, and that's you're at the foot of the mountains, and they're just going to grow from there on. Yeah, and I hate to. We get a lot of questions about running at altitude. Oh, and I hate to. I hate to break it to those of you yeah. from Florida, Florida that are running with us, but like 700 feet does not count as altitude. Yeah, that's so you, not altitude. Sorry, guys. You no, know, we're, we're running near the Smoky Mountains, not necessarily at the top of the Smoky Mountains. Yeah, so you don't have to worry about altitude, but you do. And now I'm not speaking to the Floridians, but to <laughs> others. At if you do need to know that it is humid, and if you're not used to running in the humidity, you will feel that. Like that. Yes. That'll yes. definitely take a toll. Yeah, and it generally speaking, the start of this race is very pleasant. It's on the cooler side. It can be a little bit damp. I mean, the Smoky Mountains are known for their smokiness because of the mist that comes off of all this vegetation. So it can be very wet in the mornings and very damp. And so the humidity is really high, which means you're going to need just as much electrolyte as you would need at higher elevation or, you know, just as much fluid. So as long as you're taking care of that and being aware of that and that the humidity will slow you down a little bit. And if the sun does pop out, it does feel a lot warmer than maybe the outside temperature is even telling you. 80 degrees in Tennessee is pretty hot and sticky, um, especially when the sun comes out. So generally speaking, very pleasant start, but it will get um, warm, especially if you maybe are one of our walkers or something like that. Just plan for that, that it will get warm. Um, I would call this a definite shorts and tank top kind of race. <laughs> uh, you will you will notice too that if you look on page three at that assigned uh, wave and the start times, we've moved our wave nine, which is our three thirty and above expected finish time, um, which includes our walkers. Uh, we've moved them up, so they should start just right after we start our first wave of um, of some of our faster runners. 
to, to get them out on course and also to avoid some of that heat later in the day. Yeah, so that's really helpful for, for some of those in 3.30 or later. And you also aren't bumping up against the course limit, which is there's a four-hour course limit on this. And so that kind of lets you relax a little bit. And especially in this rolling start scenario, you're going to have plenty of time to finish uh, because that hunter green wave is the color of that wave wave nine you'll be starting right after the blue wave which is the first wave that's going to be going out so that's going to give you plenty of time and uh, you won't have to worry about that what about pacers on the course what do we've got for that dane we'll have pacers on course um the, every at every 10 minute interval starting at an hour 40 minutes up to two and a half hours and then we'll also have them at 245 three hours and then three and a half hours and so if you look on page four, we break down uh, our wave start and we show which pacer and their pace time will be starting when with which wave. So like in wave so one, the 140 and the 150 pacer will be going out with that blue wave in wave one. And, right. Okay, great. So if, so if, you're, look, if you're looking to run with a pacer, um, identify the pace time that you're shooting for and then and look at their wave and then the wave chart on page three will show when they're going to be starting and they'll be there at the start line. They'll be holding big signs for us with um, identifying themselves as pacers and also identifying the wave that they're running in. So they should be easy to find. And they're always so helpful. It's always so helpful to have the pacers out there, not only for our runners, but for us, especially as we're organizing um, this rolling start. So watch for the pacers. They'll be out there to support you and also help keep you going in the right directions while you're out on the course. Um, out on the course, we do have a clothing drop. Say it is a little bit chilly to start. We do have a clothing drop that's going to be at the first aid station that you come to. But other than that, Please don't drop anything on the course. We really want to keep it as clean as possible. That's that's kind of one of our our philosophies here at Vacation Races is to do things and leave these courses in the best way possible. So make sure that if you're throwing anything away garbage wise, you do that at the aid station or you carry it with you on your person until you get to the finish line. And then if you have clothing that you want to discard, you can do that at the very first aid station about mile three. We'll take that clothing and then bring it to the finish line for you. But other than that, that just plan on carrying it with you um, once you once you get past that mile three. And as far as social distancing goes, whenever you're coming in contact with groups of people or people that aren't part of your group, we definitely encourage you to wear face coverings and to do as much social distancing as possible. It's so hard, Dane, at these races because we're so used to sweaty hugs and high fives and everything like that. And we get it. Believe me, our hearts break as well um, because we would love to be high fiving and, and doing that. Lots of air high fives is what we're going right. to do. Lots of air high fives. So. Yeah, we are. We're, we're social creatures and runners especially you know running events you make a lot of friends and it's an emotional time and and so it's uh it kind of runs contrary to probably a lot of our nature but but we do appreciate everybody's cooperation and everybody's going to get a finisher's medal of course our vacation races finisher's medal and we also have our our black bear double people that are going to be running the 5k and the half marathon with us doing 16.2 miles over the weekend and so they're going to get some extra swag on that that's going to be awesome is registration still open dane is it closed where are we at on that yeah registration is still open so if you have a last minute friend who wants to jump in with you, we've got registration open. How many runners are we expecting to see on course? Uh, we'll have probably about 1,300 running the half with us and then about 850 running the 5K on Friday. Awesome. Well, that's going to be, it's going to be an exciting time. I, I always love our trips here to Tennessee, so it's exciting to be out there. And we also have some of our club hikes and our trifecta activities that we have listed in our race guide as well. And I just have to tell you, I've done, I've been trying to chip away at doing these club hikes. We've done the Bunyan Club. I've gone up and done that in the LeConte Club. Absolutely loved it. The Chimney Club, that is open as well. So you've got those club hikes that you can do that really get you up and into the Great Smoky Mountains. It's a great way to earn some extra swag and maybe give you some ideas of things to do around the area. And we also have our trifecta activities, which will take you up to the highest point there in the National Park, which is Klingman's Dome, and get to a beautiful waterfall called Laurel Falls, and then Cades Cove, which is a beautiful area. That's where my family always sees bears, is in Cades Cove. Always, always. And I'm never with them, Dane. Never. I've never seen a bear in the Great Smoky Mountains, but there are there are small black bears that are all over the area. So I, 
I think I've seen a black bear every time I've gone to the Smokies. Oh, see, you're not supposed to tell me that. I've never seen one. My goodness, and I've hiked all over the Appalachian Trail doing the Bunyan Club and doing going up to Mount LeConte. Never once have I seen a black bear. It's all, it's all time of day, early early morning and just before sunset. Yeah, and Cades Cove is, is definitely the place place to go. So we've got those trifecta activities for you as well. It's a beautiful yeah, area. 37% of our runners have never never been to the Smokies before. So if you're wondering what to do, this is these activities are a great start, give you kind of a broad exposure to the park. Yeah, definitely. Definitely a great way to to see the park to do that. We did the LeConte Club last year. I had never been up to Mount LeConte. And I feel like we don't tell you how cool this hike is. I want to like change the race guide, Dane, because we got up there and I stood there and I was like, I had no idea there was an entire cabin city up here. Oh, yeah. I mean, I had no idea. I thought I was just climbing to get a great view and, and doing a normal thing. No, there are like cabins that you can rent and stay up on top of Mount LeConte. Yeah, you can drive up to Mount LeConte. So, but you don't get you don't get to join the LeConte Club. You no, no, you do have to do the hike, and the hike is yeah, very cool. doable. There's a whole there's a whole little village up there. Yeah, it's it's very cool. So we have some cool activities for you. Again, Tennessee doesn't have a lot of restrictions, so you'll be able to use restaurants and things like that. And so those things will be available to you. Um, getting over to Gatlinburg. Do you know if they're having the car show in Gatlinburg again this year? Have you heard? I, I, I don't know if they're having the car show. Generally, there's a giant car show over in Pigeon Forge, not Gatlinburg, yeah, Pigeon but Forge. Pigeon Forge has a giant car show every single year that we are there. And when I say giant, I feel like it's kind of like a Sturgis of car shows over there in Pigeon Forge. Um, yeah, it's a big deal. It is a very big deal. It can make a lot of traffic over there on the Gatlinburg side. So you just have to be aware of that if you are driving over in that that direction over by Dollywood. That's over in Pigeon Forge as well. But uh yeah, lots of things to do. It's a beautiful area. Townsend itself is what they, they canceled. Ca they canceled the car show. Yeah, I just looked it up. No car show this year. No car. So that's even better because it means you can get over to Gatlinburg the fast way without having to deal with the traffic. So <laughs> there you go. Um, but it's the Townsend, the side that we are on for the event is the what do they call it? The quiet side, the peaceful side of the Smokies. Yeah, the peaceful side of the Smokies. The peaceful side of the Smokies. And it is. It's like a quiet little sleepy town. And it's the perfect place for our vacation races, Great Smoky Mountain Weekend, Great Smoky Mountain Half Marathon Weekend. And we're excited to have you guys there. Um, one thing, Dane, that people ask all the time is how they can track their runners out on the course. And we have this new app that we've been using called Race Joy. Can you explain how that works? Yeah. Um, so there, there is some information in the race guide. I'm telling you, all the information is in the race guide. It's all there. Page 20 talks a little bit about it. And basically how it works is it's just an app that as a runner you have on your phone and it, and it tracks you using your GPS. So then a spectator who also has a phone that downloads the app. So both need to have the app. Then the spectator can put in your bib number and or your name and find their runner and then they can track their progress they can see where they are on course how close they are to the finish line they can even like send little text messages that you know give them little shout outs and words of encouragement along their way speaking of which speaking uh, of which Col i recorded colleen. a whole bunch of fun ones yeah colleen's got some great little shout outs so if you use race joy while you're running then uh based off of again your gps signal where you are on course it'll trigger little like push notifications, little audio signals that will be Colleen's wonderful voice cheering for you. It's like your own, it's like she's right there with it's you. It's like your own, own private coach. personal race announcer Leader. in your ears. So yeah. race joy is great. It is something you need to have and you would start it just like you would your Strava or anything like that right at the start of the race. And then your spectators, if they have it on their phones, they can actually track you as well. So it is a, it's a really fun app. We encourage you to use it. Like I said, we've been loading it up with some fun stuff and I want to know if people are using it. So if you do use it, you have to come and tell us because I know that my voice is being heard out there and I've got, I have fun facts on the great smoky mountains. That's what you can look forward to in the race joy app. So it's, it'd also be great for spectators. Um, we want you to be able to be there to cheer for your runner. But again, the finish line is is where everybody tends to want to congregate and can't have that, right? So if you can track your runner and see when they're getting close to the finish and then go to the finish line to cheer for them rather than hanging around you know, for half an hour before um, just adding bodies that don't need to be there, 
then that'd be really great. So spectators can can use the app to track their runners' progress, see when they're getting close, so that they can go to the finish line, cheer for them, and then and then get out of there. Yeah, it's really handy. So Race Joy is the name of the app, and I think we've given you guys all the details that you need. We are excited to welcome you to Townsend, Tennessee, and have a great weekend there. And it's it's going to be great. We ask you to do your very best to social distance and keep yourself safe. And we're going to do our best to make sure that we put on an amazing event that's going to keep you safe as well. Any last thoughts, Stane, before we get out of here? I don't think so. We're excited to see everybody. Uh, go to exploretownsend.com. If it's your first time to the area, they're a great resource for activities and and restaurants and things in the area. Um, in the race guide, we put a few of our favorites, some of the things that we like to do and places to eat and things like that. But Explore Townsend is a really great resource. They really are the peaceful side of the Smokies, like really small town. Um just it's, it's we love going there because they're so welcoming and inviting and, and we're glad that they would have us. And, it's a place I feel and, like you can bring your camp chair and just sit and watch traffic like that's the kind of good, place yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly the kind of place it is. You could just post up in front of some because there's so much grass again. It's like every, it's just like <laughs> it's like the town has just has one big front yard that everybody. Yes, can share it is. Like, this company it's, at a distance. Yes, at a distance. Stay six feet apart, but it's going to be great. A live event brought to you by Vacation Races. We're excited to see you guys. If you do have any questions, who can they reach out to if they do have any questions before they get to Townsend? They can reach out to me. It's uh, Dane at VacationRaces.com or Kaylee. So info at VacationRaces.com. And so either of us would be happy to answer your questions. Info at VacationRaces.com might be easier to spell than to try to figure out how to spell Dane's name. <laughs> Because it's not D A N E. <laughs> it's not. No. It's not. He's a D E H N at vacationraces.com if you need to get a hold of him. But info at vacationraces.com is a whole lot easier to use. Yeah. And Kaylee's so, I, so much nicer. Spelled I N P H O U E X. No. Info yeah. at vacationraces.com. We, we must have made that in Utah with all the okay, other right. babies who are named very strangely. Well, no, Kay- Kaylee, is, Kaylee is wonderful and she'll she'll be able to answer any of your questions again most of your questions are going to be answered here in the race guide so hopefully we've been able to address any concerns or clear things up um but the race guide is is online or email we've emailed it out uh so any questions your answers are probably going to be in there but uh more than anything we're just excited to see everybody and and to be together in the smokies and and uh cheer you on when you cross the finish line It's going to be great. So we'll see you guys in just a little bit. Great Smoky Mountain half marathon weekend coming at you. And uh, yeah, keep listening to our Vacation Races podcast. Thanks, guys. You've been listening to the Vacation Races and Friends podcast. We'd love your feedback. Email podcast at vacationraces.com with comments, concerns, or stories you'd love to share. Make sure to watch for more episodes coming soon to vacationraces.com. This episode was directed by Robin Rogers and produced by Colleen Rue in the Festival Sound Studio. For information about music licensing, contact Dane at vacationraces.com.